Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So one of Unreal biggest drawbacks has been the lack of Christmas support. This is something I've been complaining about for years, but as of yesterday, version 4.26 was released and it is feature packed. However, one of those features that was barely mentioned at all, aside from a two second clip in their release video, was Christmas support. Now, any VFX artist worth their salt knows that this is a huge deal. This makes Unreal that much more appealing for both CG artists and compers alike. Now, if you don't know what Cryptomat support is, um, it's also known as Object ID, Mat ID, and basically allows you to get a perfect mask of any object in your scene without having to do that manually. This saves you a ton of time. So, Cryptomat is here, it's awesome, so let's dive right in. All right, so now that we're in Unreal, the first thing you want to make sure is that you've actually downloaded and installed version 4.26. That should go without saying, but you never know, just to make sure. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to the Settings tab right up here at the top, click on Settings, and then Plugins. In the search bar, you want to type for Render Queue. And once that you've done that, you want to make sure that Movie Render Queue Additional Render Passes is enabled. If it's not enabled, you're not going to get your crypto mats. So click Enable, and you're going to have to restart the engine, as always. And don't worry about that, it's fine. A message will pop up saying it's a beta, this is normal. Um, it, it's, a, it's a new feature, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Once that's done and you restarted the engine, I went ahead and also added some uh, some plants in the scene just to add a little bit of extra complexity, and we'll see together if Cryptomat actually supports opacity on this type of shapes. We're going to have to go ahead and create a sequence. So I'm going to go to Cinematics up here, Add Level Sequence, and you, I'm, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it uh, Object ID. Save. So a new sequence tab should show up at the bottom here and you just need to create a camera. So I'm gonna go create a camera right here. All right, now you don't really have to change anything here. Uh, what I like doing is setting the film back to full frame DSLR because as a photographer, I shoot full frame and it just makes sense to me. The next thing we wanna do is, you know, we don't need to have 150 frame. We can probably have it down to like, you know, let's say 15, okay? <clears throat> and now that's time to render. What you need to do is you go to Window up here, Cinematics, Movie Render Queue. So once you clicked on Movie Render Queue, a new window will pop up. And what you need to do next is click on Render and add Object ID, which is the new sequence that we just created right now. So you want to click on Unsaved Config right here. And once again, another window is going to pop up. So you got output rendering and settings here. We can go ahead and click on the JPEG sequence thing here. Delete that. We don't want to be rendering in JPEG. What you want to do is you want to click on setting and add object IDs limited. Now, once we have object IDs limited, the most important thing here is you want to click on settings again and add EXR sequence. Okay. Uh, if you don't have anything, in the output tab, so let me delete that right here. If you don't have the output tab and you render, you're not going to get any frames written. Uh, so it's imperative that you click on setting and choose EXR sequence. I tried it with PNG sequence. This didn't seem to work very well or at all. So make sure that you are in EXR sequence. So make sure you have output EXR sequence and in the rendering tab have object IDs. Also in the EXR sequence, make sure that multi-layer is checked because otherwise you're going to be rendering a bunch of images, um, lots of frames, not so good. In the output tab, you can go ahead and choose your output directory and resolution, which is going to leave that 1920 by 1080 and hit accept. And all you need to do now is hit render local. So it's going to render all your frames. Once that's done, your frames are written and we can bring these into Photoshop. So since I don't have a new commercial license or Fusion 16 or 17, I think it is now, uh, I don't actually have another way of viewing these crypto mats apart from using Photoshop. Now, in Photoshop, you're going to need a plugin called EXRIO that is free. The link is in the description below. And all you need to do now is you go ahead and you import your files. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this one, you know, MatID 15, doesn't matter which one. So a menu is going to pop up with EXRIO. Just hit open. So once you import your file into Photoshop, EXRIO is going to split up every single render pass into one layer. So as you can see here, we've got the alpha pass, then we've got the beauty, and then we've got the crypto mat here. This is what we're looking for. This is what we want. Um, so as you can see, every single layer here corresponds to an individual object ID. And that's really all there is to it, folks. If you just bring this into Nuke and Fusion, you'll have your entire sequence. And as you'll see, crypto mat is working 
as it should. So once again, this was a pretty straightforward process. The EXR file that you get from Unreal will have a perfectly functioning mat in any software you use, whether it's Nuke or Fusion or Photoshop, whatever. If the video had helped you out in any way, or if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And once again, thank you for watching.